Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dog. I'm Hujiwana and today we're looking at variable geometry vehicles, ones that change their shape or form in some way. But this will not include transformers or mechs, because well, that's their whole deal. They aren't a thing that has a moving part, they are moving parts. It's a basic feature of their operation. It'd be like saying, well, a combustion or jet engine has moving parts, so every single thing with one of those counts, and clearly they don't. Let's kick things off with one of the franchises that does variable geometry the most, Star Wars. And it's arguably become an almost required feature of a smaller hero ship style thing to even be Star Warsy. even though there are plenty of iconic Star Wars ships out there that don't do this. The originator of this trope, in Star Wars at least, is of course the X-Wing and its S-foils that switch into a combat mode, but that's the only one in the original movie that does anything like this. What about the other two original movies? There's the B wing in Jedi, and of course the Imperial Shuttle, but does Boba's ship count? Sure, we can presume that the inside shifts because it flies at one angle and lands at another, but back then that could have just meant it was a full-on tail sitter. I think it wasn't until season 2 of The Mandalorian that we actually got to see the inside doing something, and that came so long after all the other variable geometry ships all over the place that it may just be a trope follower. It's a weird one. Speaking of those others, there are a ton. Vulture droids, Stinger Mantis, endless X-Wing derivations, some of the player ships from the Old Republic, the Mandalorian ships, even TIEs do it these days. Is it a bit overdone? Yeah, maybe, but it is really cool, isn't it? And I think that's because it's not really something that happens in real life anymore outside of folding things up to squeeze more onto an aircraft carrier, or maybe switching to VTOL mode. But one of those is done for storage, and the other is only a change to where the thrust points. That said, there is one particular form of variable geometry in aircraft that was the hot new tech when Star Wars was originally made, but isn't really around anymore. The Swing Wing. That now old tech is almost certainly what inspired the S-Foils, and because it isn't around that much now, but Star Wars still is, all those variable geometry spacecraft now skeuomorphically feel Star Warsy rather than aardvarky. But the real tech becoming overtaken in real life did not stop it being more developed in fiction, as we can see with all the designs in Ace Combat and movies like Stealth that have their own swinging wings and other adjustable control surfaces. Even there, the extra high tech designs often don't have these features. I dunno, just an interesting look at how changing real life tech influences fiction. Next up is Star Trek, which does have the occasional bit of moving geometry, but it's much less common. I think one of the bigger examples is the scimitar from Nemesis, with its unfolding veins that are part of the super weapon it carries, which is a really effective use of variable geometry from a narrative standpoint. It's a visible indication that, oh snap, it's building up to do something terrible, like a cobra neck or the spines on a porcupine, but here it's not just a warning, there is actual danger. Also, since it takes a bit of time to open up, it builds tension while basically providing a sort of progress bar for the audience to follow. Apart from those few special instances, and something else I'll talk about in a minute, broadly speaking, Star Trek has had unchanging ships. And to be fair, it did originate as a TV show in the 60s, so its visual style crystallised around low-budget static props. And it pretty much stayed that way until the next generation, which just went absolutely insane and split the ship into two. Putting aside the facetiousness from my low opinion of early saucer separations, the concept has been used to good effect a number of times. Best of Both Worlds did a decent job while stuck with the TV show budget, and Star Trek Beyond kind of took the idea from generations and executed it absolutely fantastically. But that's not all saucer separations were used for, because of course we have to talk about Prometheus. Or do we? It's there, it's kinda silly, that's all there is to say. Star Trek Online does have a really cool ship based on it though. A trope that very often goes along with variable geometry is disconnected parts. It's a quick and easy way to make something feel super extra high tech, and almost magical in a way. It's like an instant shortcut, but equally that means it can come off feeling a bit weird if it's not handled just right. Say, for example, if it's introduced in a precursor type ancient race in a sequel made by a different team to previous entries. But generally, I actually quite like this trope. It really is a good way of showing that something is alien and very different to technology we know and use. And yes, I like Jupiter Ascending. Surely someone else out there likes this stupid, terrible, gorgeous movie. Anyone? No? 
Well, floating geometry was put to good use here. On these fighter-type craft, it is used to make them feel very bird-like, shifting and morphing their wings without any of the complicated bits and bobs that would otherwise need to go in there to get such movements out of a machine. And the movie is meant to be a fanciful fairy tale, so the floating part transforming fighters just work. Slightly more mundane moving parts exist on the larger ships too, on the sail type things, which could be solar panels or more likely are there just to look cool. From an in-universe perspective I mean, these ships are the ones flown about by the uber rich after all. Another franchise that has floaty bits for vibes is Endless Space 2 with the Riftborn, an entire faction that is all about the high tech floaty parts look. From what I remember, their ships don't really do any transforming though, instead the discontinuous parts are for decoration or are a neat way to spice up, say, a gun turret. Something that uses floaty variable geometry to show a difference in tech and capability is the main player ship in Chorus. It's meant to be an elite unit from the most powerful and advanced faction and splits into various disconnected segments whenever it goes into Newtonian flight mode. That is, it stops acting like an aircraft in space and can point in any direction while continuing on the course it was on. So it uses a super high tech special technique for normal space flight. You'd think things would work the other way, but hey ho, this game is far from pretending to be realistic. It's just a neat way to show how manoeuvrable the ship is compared to its peers. A bit like Book's ship from Star Trek Discovery, a show that became one of the big users of disconnected ship parts after its jump to the 32nd century. And the tech has kinda not been used to its full potential. Sure, Book's ship does all the splitting apart and morphing stuff, but that's it really. Pretty much every Starfleet vessel in this era is discontinuous, especially with the warp nacelle, but they never actually did anything with this tech, which is a big reason why many people thought it was kinda dumb. One argument I never really got though was the idea of structural weakness because Star Trek has structural integrity fields. Spacecraft are already held together with force fields, so this is just expanding on that. Also, the idea that floaty parts are inherently unrealistic, which is silly because flux pinning is this concept in real life. Anyway, the show never did anything interesting with this tech beyond Book's ship, until finally, near the end of the entire show, Discovery actually moved its disconnected nacelles. It tucked them up over the engineering hull in order to fly inside the huge Breen Dreadnought, and it looks great! Shame that's really the only instance of this happening. And now a hard lurch back to real life variable geometry vehicles, this time spacecraft, which have one very specific use case, centrifugal gravity. The thing with centrifuges is that they need to be kinda big, and kinda big is hard to launch into space unless you're in KSP. The solution has been all sorts of ways of having something small unfold or inflate or split apart in order to reach decent radius. Does this really count though? I think in many, if not all of these designs, the operation is one way only. That makes them more akin to deploying solar panels or something, rather than being full on variable geometry. But they're still neat, and absolutely something that would make great inspiration for a fictional design. Which is fantastic, because variable geometry is such a cool concept. As long as it's not just there for its own sake, or in a way that doesn't make much sense, it really is a very good way of spicing up a vehicle to be that bit more special. I can't wait to see more moving parts in future, especially ones that take inspiration from new sources. You can support Space Talk by joining our Patreon where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters and thank you for watching.